From Florida to Maryland and even in Michigan, police across the country have been warning the public about people pretending to play violins to solicit money. Viewers alerted us it is happening locally too. News Channel 3's Chris Yu saw a performer this afternoon and joins us live in studio to explain what happened here. Chris. Yeah, Erica, law enforcement called this a nationwide issue. Police from places like Pinellas Park, Florida, Montgomery County, Maryland, and Norwalk, Connecticut, among others, all warning the public about people pretending to play violin to solicit donations. Today, we saw a man appearing to play the violin outside the Target on Southwest Niche Avenue in Portage. He claimed he needed help for food and rent, so I asked him about his performance. Outside the Portage Target, this man is aiming for donations. With a violin and a sign that reads, Dad with three kids, please help for food and rent. But a News Channel 3 viewer told me he's worried the man is deceiving people. Is it okay if we get some video of you playing? So this afternoon, we approached him. Sir? You don't, you don't speak English? Okay. Can we get some video of you playing? See? The man was not playing his violin when the violin Sir? music started playing on the speaker. We got some viewers concerned about that you're not actually playing the violin here. Um, just wanted to get your perspective of what's going on here. I'm with Channel 3, by the way. I don't speak English. You don't speak English? But your sign is English. Who made the sign for you? The man would not say anything else as he packed up and left. Police across the country say they've seen similar performers in their jurisdictions too. The Pinellas Park Police Department in Florida urged the public to, quote, be smart and safe with your hard-earned money, while the Montgomery County Police Department in Maryland warned that claims by such performers are usually untrue. Even the supervisor of Springfield Township in Oakland County, Michigan, is chiming in, saying, quote, These are not your neighbors in need. We've seen license plates from Texas, Virginia, and Illinois, end quote. I was told the man has performed outside other local shopping centers in recent weeks in both the Portage and Kalamazoo areas. The city of Kalamazoo tells me that street musicians are required to get a permit and it's illegal to solicit money on private property without the owner's permission. Over the retrial of two suspects accused in the alleged plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer rules certain texts and communication made by a secret FBI informant in the case will be off limits to the jury. And defense attorneys for the two defendants have argued that the FBI informants involved actually steered their clients into the plot and that the jury should see some of their text messages to get the full story. News Channel 3's Mike Kravzik was in a federal courtroom in Grand Rapids today where that trial begins two weeks from now. Now here in court today, federal prosecutors and defense attorneys laid out their game plans for the upcoming trial. Much of the evidence and the witnesses will be the same as the first trial. Federal prosecutors said they plan to introduce 17 new social media messages exchanged between Adam Fox and Barry Croft. The two men on trial are accused of conspiring to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. In court today, Adam Fox's defense attorney says he plans to call to the witness stand the two men, former co-defendants, who were acquitted during the first trial. FBI informant video captures Adam Fox and Barry Croft blowing up explosives during training exercises, which were played at the first trial, which prosecutors say will once again be key pieces of evidence during the second trial. The FBI says the governor's COVID-19 stay-at-home orders fueled their kidnapping plot. At the first trial, the jury deadlocked in all charges against Fox and Croft. A mistrial was declared following the April trial. Two others, Brandon Caserta and Daniel Harris, were found not guilty on all charges. Attorneys for all four men have claimed they were entrapped by the FBI and that there wasn't a conspiracy to kidnap anyone. Do you want to call Daniel Harris or Brandon Caserta? That's always in the wind. You know, trial strategy is uh, under wraps, but um, certainly uh, if they're willing to come, uh, we may avail ourselves of their testimony. Certainly they had some things to say about this case and the government's conduct. Judge also indicating this afternoon the 18-person jury with six alternates 
won't be told explicitly about the outcome of the first trial. Judge also ruling some of the FBI informant text and messages made to his handlers over the seven months he embedded with the militia group will be off limits to jurors. Judge Robert Yonker says they were hearsay, the same ruling he made before the first trial. Ty Garbin and Caleb Franks testified against the four co-defendants during the first trial in exchange for a lighter prison sentence. Prosecutors say they plan to call the pair once again to testify during this upcoming trial. Adam Fox and Barry Croft both face conspiracy to kidnap charges along with conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. Both carry a possible life sentence. Leaving in Kalamazoo today, Governor Gretchen Whitmer signs an executive directive to reduce gun violence. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 3 at 5. I'm Andy Dominiani. And I'm Erica Moke. Today, the governor also hearing from people in our community impacted by gun violence. News Channel 3's Trish McCauley joins us live in Kalamazoo to tell us why the governor says we have to act now. Trisha. That's because in just the first six months of 2022, more than 450 Michiganders have died from gun violence. Just overnight here in Kalamazoo, two more people were shot on the city's north side. This is an ongoing issue that community leaders say starts with intervention and prevention. He died a hero. We were just outside being kids when a man with no heart came and changed my life forever. People from all walks of life joined Governor Gretchen Whitmer in Kalamazoo for a roundtable discussion, sharing how they've been impacted by gun violence. He got jealous. The, the, next, the next day, he lured Maggie to his dorm room, and he shot her, and then he shot himself. Governor Whitmer says there are a lot of pieces to the puzzle of gun violence, from mental health to stricter gun laws. Not talking about it's not an option. We got to keep our communities safe. We got to prevent crime. We've got to do everything we can to um, curtail the gun violence. Today, Whitmer signs an executive directive that has state departments and law enforcement investing all available resources into intervention and prevention. She also calls on Michigan State Police to improve the process of reporting criminal mental health and juvenile records. According to the state, nearly one in three reported violent crimes involve a firearm. An issue that has become the norm for many in the Kalamazoo community, including our youth. My dad, he had 22 holes in him. He was shot 11 times. Community leaders say they need more than just money thrown at the problem because that's not a long-term solution. Oftentimes in the community, we're, we're giving a little and say, okay, do something with that. But it's not enough for a sustaining process. Government leaders say they also need the community to step up to make their neighborhoods a safer place. In Kalamazoo last weekend, we had nine people shot at 2 o'clock in the morning in the 1300 block of North Church Street. There were 40 shell casings at the scene. Do you think any of the 200 people that were there have told the police who did it? So far this year in Kalamazoo, there have been 48 shootings. Three of those have been fatal. In 2021, there were 89 shootings in total that year. 13 people died from gun violence.